Hello my friends. Throughout the war in Ukraine there has been a large variety of tanks being used, today we are going to take a look at why the Russians have so many different models of tanks. At the height of the Cold War, the Soviet Union ended up using three different frontline main battle tanks, the T-64, T-72, and T-80. The three tanks also shared similar capabilities even though they were designed by three different design bureaus. The innovative T-64 was designed by the Kharkiv Mozorov Design Bureau and the Ukrainian SSR, the cheap but reliable T-72 was designed by Karts of Benediktov Design Bureau in the Ural Mountains of the Russian SSR, and the high-tech T-80 was designed by Leningrad Kirov Design Bureau, also of the Russian SSR. Let's take a look at each tank's history. The T-64 introduced a number of advanced features including composite armor, a compact engine and transmission, and an autoloader to allow the crew to be reduced to three. The T-64 weighed only 38 tons making it easier on roads and bridges. The engine was an improvement from previous models, it is a five-cylinder flat engine using an opposed piston design, making it light and powerful. The T-64 suffered from too many innovations adopted too fast. The engine was notoriously unreliable and had serious issues in cold environments. The tank was very cramped inside, and the crews did not like having one less crew member that could help with the daily maintenance and field repairs of the tank. Lastly, the original 115mm gun was highly unreliable, with the exposed autoloader gaining a bad reputation for grabbing the uniforms of the crew and pulling them into the breach. Only a limited number of these tanks were built, and they appear to have been sent to the Far East for long-term testing. In 1969 the tank was vastly improved, with the replacement of the 115mm gun with a 125mm gun firing separate loading combustible case ammunition. At the time of its introduction, this was the most powerful tank gun in the world and would remain so for over a decade. These features made the T-64 expensive to build, significantly more so than previous generations of Soviet tanks. This was especially true of the engine, which was harder to build and cost twice as much as previous designs and in turn required more training for repairs. Several proposals were made to improve the T-64 with new engines, but chief designer Alexander Morozov's political power in Moscow kept the design in production regardless of any concerns about price. An interesting note about the T-64, it was never offered for export even though about 13,000 were made until 1987. The complexity and cost of the T-64 led to the T-72 being designed as an emergency design, only to be produced in the case of a war, but its 40% lower price led to it entering production in spite of Morozov's objections. Due to the T-64 having a very complex and time-consuming engine to produce, a prototype was sent to the carts of Benediktov Design Bureau to see if they could rework the engine design so that production could be sped up and costs could be lowered. The Bureau came up with a version of the T-64 with a cheaper and much more reliable V-45 engine of 780 horsepower, however it was determined that the new engine was causing stress cracks on the T-64's hull and required a redesign of the chassis. Due to Alexander Morozov clout with Moscow whatever the carts of Benediktov Design Bureau came up with, it was only to be produced in the event of war and the T-64 would stay as the Soviet Union's main battle tank. Leonid Kartsev the chief designer of the T-72 was unsatisfied with the innovations of the T-64 and totally redesigned the tank. Kartsev melded what he believed were the best aspects of the T-64A, a prototype called Object 167, and an upgun T-62. Politically motivated opposition continued to plague the tank throughout its development, at one point the designers were even reprimanded for insubordination, However it was concluded their design met the requirements of being less expensive and easier to manufacture. By 1971 the political tides in the USSR changed enough to allow for the T-72 to be produced for both domestic and export markets. In the early 1970s the Soviet Union was producing T-64 and T-72 models as rapidly as they could to replace their aging T-54, T-55 and T-62 fleet of tanks when they realized NATO countries were testing new generations of tanks themselves, notably the M1. Leopard 2, Chieftain and AMX-30 tanks. The Soviets felt they were falling behind and they needed another design. So enter the Leningrad Kirov Design Bureau. The head of the bureau, Nikolai Popov, knew that the Americans were working on a turbine engine for the M1 and saw that as the future of tank warfare. Even though the turbine engine was new to the western tanks, 
the Leningrad Kirov plant had been working on designs in 1949 and even had prototypes as early as 1955, so they probably were the best equipped Soviet design team and factory to work on the project. In 1969 a prototype was built with a multi-fuel gas turbine engine. During the trials, it became obvious that the tank required a redesign of the vehicle's suspension. A second prototype was made with bigger drive sprockets and return rollers and six road wheels instead of five. In 1974, Minister of Defense Andrei Grechko decided against production due to the tank's high fuel use and lack of improvements of armament and armor over other tanks that were currently in production. In 1976 Grechko died and Dmitry Ustinov, appointed in his place. Starting production of the T-80 in August 1976. So until 1976 until 1987 there were Soviet tanks being produced that had some similar systems but were generally different models for the same purpose, plus the T-55 was still being built until 1981. So the question comes up, why did they use three different tanks with similar abilities to serve the same purpose? There are a few different hypotheses on the answer to this question, however it probably came down to politics. At the height of the Soviet Union about 15% of their economy was based on their military and their military was a major political factor in the Politburo and of course corruption factored in. The designers and factory heads had strong political allies enabling them to manipulate the military-industrial complex, even if it was not for the good of the country. Furthermore in the 1970s the Soviet economy was faltering and being propped up by oil revenue so the cost to retool a factory, while keeping 100% employment may have factored in for some of the politicians. The final question is whether or not Russia will learn from this mistake and switch to a uniform main battle tank in the future, in my opinion the answer is no. Factories are still producing T-72 and T-80 tanks among others and there is still massive corruption in the Russian military complex. Thank you for watching and please like and subscribe.